pretty much anyone in the NBA at this point in his career. What do you say about his transition from the style of play and using his athleticism early to using his IQ more so in picking his spots now? Uh, when you got a basketball mind and, and, a, and a high IQ about the game, uh, then it's a lot easier for you to make the transition. Uh, look at D-Wade. Uh, you look at Vince. You know, these are guys who are super, super superior when it comes to athleticism. But because of their mind, they're able to transition and still be productive. So, uh, that's how you kind of look at it. How happy, I mean, I know he's one of your best guys, but how happy are you that this is actually going to happen? Uh, I'm happy that we was able to keep him away from everybody else. And I mean, it's the guy, I mean, come on, man. It's like one of my best friends. So, you know, uh, it's like, uh, it's kind of like when you start school, and uh, you know, you walk into the classroom, you're not quite sure who your classmates is, and when you walk in there, one of your best friends is in there, you're like, oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good class. So, uh, this is the type of feeling I got. When Howard's story came out, you know, two years ago about just the idea that the four of you could one day play together on the same team, did, did you really think that, that either that would come together, or that you would even get a real chance to play with one of them? Uh, I had a lot of hope of it, and uh, obviously there's a lot of speculation throughout the summer with Melo um, and, and possibly him joining us. And uh, you know, obviously we see how that panned out. But you know, I'm, you know, we're blessed as a franchise to be able to have a player of the caliber of D-Wade, um, you know, join us. So uh, it's exciting. When you left Wayne with the River, we're gonna do this again someday. Did that in 14? Did that come up? Did you have that talk with him? Or no, no, um, talk didn't come up. But uh, you know, over the course of over time, I think, you know, even with the story coming out, you know, with Howard, you know, made that story, you know, we always, it'd be an unbelievable you know, opportunity. We all got an opportunity to play together. But, you know, obviously right now, you know, myself and D-Wade are back and, uh, you know, along with the rest of these guys. So, you know, it should be um, a pretty dynamic piece. You, you spent a week with him uh, in, in L.A. Um, how does he look? How do you think he fits on the floor here with you guys? Um, well, he adds another, obviously, another championship DNA. Um, another guy with high basketball IQ. Um, another playmaker that can make plays and also make shots. And uh, um, you know, so that adds to our that adds to our depth. And we were already, you know, uh, you know, pretty deep. So you know, it adds even more depth and uh, even more playmaking to our to our team, which uh, obviously you guys saw last year. You can still do. Numbers wise, is in the Miami years were some of the best of both of your careers. Last year, Chicago wasn't most efficient for him. Do you think he can get back to that efficiency that you guys had together? Um, he... Yeah, I think so. I think it's just because of the guys that we have playing around him. Um, you know, he doesn't have to worry about ever seeing a double team. He doesn't have to ever worry about, you know, taking tough shots. None of us. None of us have to take or make tough shots. I mean, we have to make tough shots, but we don't have to take them. We got, too many, we got a lot of options. Uh, there should be a lot of guys uh, getting open shots or just, uh, you know, late contested shots. So. Um, you know, efficiency has always been a huge part of, of myself and D-Wade, and, uh, and uh, I know he uh, didn't like the way how he wasn't as efficient as he know he can be or has been throughout his career last year. What is it about that on-court relationship that makes it so good? Why do you compliment him so well on the other way around? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just the whole honesty thing. When you can be honest with somebody no matter what's going on and, uh, and your games translate, then it's, uh, it works very easily. So. You know, he tells me when I F up, and I tell him the same thing. And we get on each other. We've always been like that, uh, especially the four years that we play with one another. He, and even before that, when we just used to text. You know, I watch his games and tell him things he could have did better, and vice versa. So, um, you know, it's just just a brotherhood that we have. Brian, during your time in Miami, you guys were known for the spectacular alley-oops. Should we expect to see more of that uh, this year here in Cleveland? Um, I'm still athletic. <laughs> and I think he still can pass, so <laughs> expect it. Did you have to did you actually have to recruit him? Is that how you would yeah. characterize the, yeah. the conversation? Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day it's still a you know, we're gonna be brothers no matter what. But this is a this is a you know, professional decision. This is his business that he has to worry about in his his career. So there's a lot of teams and a lot of guys reaching out to him, so you know, I couldn't feel entitled, you know, to you know, just because he's a and I talked to him, you know, every day. You know, I didn't have no entitlement about that. It's, you know, still, you know, wanting to get him comfortable and let him know how he could help us and, you know, and things of that nature. So, you know, I guess it worked something. How did you sell Wayne when you talked to him? I ain't no selling. 
uh, ain't no sale. Just tell them how uh, what we about here, and uh, you know how you can help our ball club, and you know, how much we can, you know, how much we can benefit, and how much he can benefit from being, you know, us all being together. So um, you know, it wasn't all me; it was also the front office. And you know, I know T. Lou talked to him about you know ways he's seen us. We can, you know, we can use him and, and utilize his ability. So um, I just did my part. It didn't make sense for him to come here financially last summer. Back, I don't know, if, there, if you had him last year, do you wonder what type of difference that could have made? No. No. I'm not an if guy. You know, um, still you can't think about the ifs. You just worry about the present and uh, situation you can do better. I know you don't. You still have time. I'm not a GM. But you mentioned Carmelo a little bit ago. Were you disappointed at all that he didn't come here? They theoretically had the opportunity to get him. Um. No, I mean, you know, from a friend perspective, you know, I wish he would have came and we could have worked some things out. But um, at the end of the day, I think our front office has done a great job. And, you know, either the Knicks fell or we fell. It just didn't work out, you know, and it, it worked out for the Thunder. So, like I said, I've been pretty much, you know, I've been pretty much even killed this summer. And, uh, you know, I wish he would have been here. It would been great to have him. You know, I love Melo's game. I love D-Way's game. I love CP's game. You guys know how I feel about those three. And, um, but, you know, you know, that doesn't take anything away from what we got in that locker room, which is a lot. And uh, I look forward to continue to grow with these guys, especially the new guys. Why do you think you and Wayne are so close? What was it? That... I don't know. I don't know. It's just organic, man. It's not forced. It's not. It's just organic. Two more. I said yesterday that you're just happier. That it seems to me oh. that, you're just, that, that you're just happier this year. And that was before <laughs> Wayne. Yeah. Um, do you, you agree with that? And what, what do you think? I mean, you said your kids kind of fired you up this summer to yeah. get back at it, but what do you think it? Just what do you think that happiness kind of from? I don't know. Um, I guess you know, just miss playing ball. I guess or opportunity that I have to lead a, a franchise once again, you know, and take guys to measures that they haven't been before, and hopefully I can try to take myself to places I haven't been before, and that's why I've been, you know, training as much as I have, you know, over the last three months. So. Um, just enjoying your life. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful time. I mean, it's 90 in September in Cleveland. I mean, how could you not be happy? So, Brown, how are the dynamics of this team different than the one you had last year with all the moving pieces and, and, and parts of your I mean, obviously, we had just so many guys come in and come out, either from signing guys or for guys getting injured and guys being in and out of the lineup. And, you know, JR got hurt early on. Kyrie didn't start the season uh, to begin with, obviously, because of the knee. Um, you know, we signed some guys uh, late in the season as well, brought in guys. Uh, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, after, after, you know, the front office and those guys decide, you know, what's going to happen with the 15-man roster or whatever the case may be, these will be the guys that we're going to have. I mean, we have, these are the guys from right now, these are the guys that you probably see all year. So uh, it allows us to jail, it allows us to, you know, you guys always hear me talk about, you know, chemistry. And, Team camaraderie and how important you know rhythm and things of that nature is. So, you know, we have you know, obviously there will be some things that happen throughout the course of the season that you can't, you know, you can't uh, can't worry about or you can't affect. But things that we can't control, uh, we should be in pretty good position.